burning. Keep the fire burning. There was a very important instruction that God gave to the priests, the Levites, in the Old Testament. And that can be found in the book of Leviticus chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. Leviticus chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. Say, and the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not be put out, and the priests shall burn wood on it every morning, and lay the burnt offerings in order on it, and he shall burn on, the, on it the fat of the peace offerings. A fire shall always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. It shall never go out. And that is the instruction from the Lord. And that same instruction is what was also given to us in the New Testament. As the priests of the Lord, you are meant to keep the altar on fire. You are meant to keep the altar on fire. And I hope you know that we are all redeemed as priests and as kings unto the Lord our God. In the new dispensation in the New Testament, there is nothing called laity. Where they say, oh, these are laity, these are clergy. All of us are priests, according to the book of Revelation. We are redeemed as priests and kings unto our God. And we are to reign on the earth. Now, there is no other way to live a victorious Christian life. There is no other way. A believer will succeed if not by fire. By fire. And this fire can be generated on the altar of prayer. On the altar of prayer. That is where the fire for you to succeed will be generated. So we need to stay empowered from our altar. We need to stay on fire from the altar. See, this year now have been declared as our year of distinction. If God is not taking, somebody will say, ah, daddy declared and said that God has spoken. Do we need to worry ourselves? Is God not the almighty? What he has said he will do, he will do. Nobody can stay his hands. Why not we wait and see and have the prophetic word fulfilled in our lives? No, Paul was telling Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, he said, my son Timothy, by the prophetic words that has spoken concerning you, he said that you may war with them. You may wage a good warfare. So even the prophetic word, the word that God has spoken to you as an individual and to us as a commission still demands warfare. You need to wage war with them. Now, you may realize the Bible said in Psalm 119, verse 89, it says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. The word of God is settled in heaven and not on the earth. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. But for us on the earth, we need to enforce his word. We need to enforce his will. We need to fight for his will to be done in the life or in our lives here on the earth. So the word of the Lord is settled because in heaven there is no contention about the word of God. Anything God declares, he stands in heaven. There is no opposition. Now, in Luke chapter 11, verse 1, Luke chapter 11, verse 1, now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place, 
when he sees that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples, even John the Baptist was a man of prayer. And he taught his disciples the same. He said, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. So he said to them, now look at what he told them, what Jesus told them. He said, when you pray, say our Father in heaven. When you pray, not if you pray. When you pray. So he expects them to pray. So prayer was in their curriculum. When you pray. Say, our Father who in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. That means the kingdom of God has to be brought down. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on the earth as it is where. Your kingdom come. So his kingdom, we have to enforce it here. Your will be done on the earth. Now, he was teaching them to pray. When you pray, enforce his will. That means between heaven and earth, the will of God should be enforced. That means no matter the destiny that you carry, no matter what God has said concerning you, if you don't pray for that will, for that prophetic word, for that agenda of heaven, for that purpose of God, for that divine will to take place in your life, you may live without it. Your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. So the kingdom of God must be translated here on the earth. So if you stay without prayer, you may have the will of the devil being done in your life. You may have his kingdom rule and reign on you. But until you begin to enforce in that place of prayer, your kingdom, your kingdom, you enforce it. Pray, your kingdom come, your will, your will be done in my life. Your will be done on earth. There are so many people that are living that we never smell a, an inch of what God has in plan. For their lives. Because they refuse to pray for his will. They refuse to enforce his will in their lives. Now, it might interest you to know that even Jesus himself, when he was on the earth, he also has to pray for the will of God to be done. He prayed. He engaged in prayer. And the apostles also engaged in prayer. In Acts chapter 6 verse 4, they said we will give ourselves continually to prayer. We will give ourselves. So there is no break. He said we will give ourselves continually. So the Bible said the priest must burn wood on the altar. The fire must never be put out. They say we will give ourselves. Among other things, the only thing we will not stop to do is giving ourselves to the place of prayer. We will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the world. Now, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 12, Revelation chapter 12, to make it clear to you, you see, he said, Therefore rejoice, O heaven. The people in heaven are already rejoicing. I wish we are all there. They say, rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But he said, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. Heaven rejoice, earth. Whoa. And we are living on the earth. We are living on the earth. The people in heaven, has no, they have no problem. They have no devil there. Because it's no longer there, but he has come down here. So we have opposition. And that is why prayer is not an option. Hallelujah. 
In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, he said, pray without ceasing. You see, there is reason why the Bible is calling for prayer on the earth. Prayer without ceasing. In Luke chapter 18, verse 1, Jesus said, for this reason, at this essence, men ought always to pray and not to cease, not to faint. Men ought always to pray. Always to pray. Always. Always. Ought to pray always. Always. Not for some time. So if you think that uh, prayer is something that you do for a while and go on holiday, I'm sorry. No. You see, when, the one, one of the things that you do without ceasing is breathing. That's one of the things. If you cease, if you stop to, that, that is what prayer is. Say, pray without ceasing. So you don't have break. If you want to take break, take break in breathing. Let's see. Pray without ceasing. Now, may I assure you that everything we need, even as we are here on the earth, has been provided by God. Everything that we need has been provided. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. He said, Blessed be the God and the, uh, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed, blessed us with every spiritual blessing. In the heavenly places in Christ. So everything we need has been provided by God. So in prayer, we are not asking God to create anything anew. No. You are not asking him, Father, please make my husband. Father, make my wife. Father, can you create my children? No. The Bible said everything has been provided. We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. But you see, our challenge here is that they are in the heavenly places while we are on the earth. That's the challenge. Everything that God has blessed us, they are in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But we are on the earth. So we have a challenge. Why would God know that I'm living on the earth and my blessings are in the heavenly places? So now what we have the challenge we have is not provision. No. But it's conversion. How do you convert the blessing that are in the heavenly places to the earth realm where you live? We don't have any challenge, provisional challenge, no. Our challenge as believers is not provision. God has created everything he created. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 3 to 1, and the Bible said that God looked at everything he created and he said, oh, it is all good. And he sees from his works. So everything has been made. But they are somewhere. And so you have problem of how do I now translate, convert what has been pro the provision that God has made for me in the heavenly places where you kept it to draw it down to the earth realm where I live. And that is what we do on the altar of prayer. Someone is asking, why, why, why would God do something like that? Why would he you know, provide everything? Why not? He would have just put it, let's go and put them in the storage. Let's, let, he would have given me my own portion. I know how to secure it. You cannot. Because we are incapable of keeping them. That's why. We are incapable of safeguarding the blessings. He tried it with Adam and Eve. They sold out. He tried it before. So we are not the first. He created them, gave them everything. Before you know, they handed it over to the devil. They surrendered it. So God said, no, for me to help man, I will be the keeper. I will keep them. I will safeguard them. When they need it, let them call. In, Matthew, in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, he said, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire. So when you identify that you have a need, you say what? 
Pray. Whatever thing you desire, when you pray. So when you desire, oh, I need to get married. You say what? Pray. Ah, I need a car. Where is he? Where is he? You say what? Pray. So that prayer is a method of conversion. Bringing what has been provided that God is keeping in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus to convert them to the earth realm to become material things for you to handle here. So the only way to have your desires on the earth is to pray. Is to pray. Praise God. Now we have an enemy. We have an adversary. A very serious one. The Bible said in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. He said be sober. Be vigilant. He said don't live anyhow. Be at alert. Be serious. Because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's moving around. He travels. He's seeking who he may devour. He's looking for people that are not sober. He's looking for people that are not vigilant. He's looking for careless folks that he may devour them. So when he travels, he can travel anywhere. You see, when we say that devil is mobile, he walks around. It's not just a to and fro motion. It's not oscillatory motion. He can travel into your ancestry. He can travel into generations before you. He can tra- He's looking for something. He's seeking for fault lines. He's seeking for things that he can bring, charges against you. Now, you see, the Bible said in the book of Revelation, it said there was no place found for the devil. No longer in heaven. But there is one place that is found where the devil is still authorized to appear today in heaven. And that is the court of heaven. The court of heaven. The court of heaven. That is the only place that is allowed for him to appear. You see, a case cannot go on in the court without a prosecutor. If you have gone to court, you must, there must be somebody who is pressing charge. So in the court of heaven, devil has a place there. Because he always comes to bring charge. Now let's see the book of Job chapter 1 verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, I thought when they saw the devil, they would shout blood of Jesus. <laughs> or they would shout, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. But, but just, just look at me. Everybody, everybody just remain calm. So in that place, he's not just, he's not a visitor. And the Lord said, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? So the devil is walking around considering people. Maybe today he was on your dormant, you didn't see. So he's moving around considering people. He said, ah, okay. He said, ah, where are you coming from? He said, I've been, my mission, I've been going around. Considering people. He said, the Bible says he walks around to and fro like a roaring lion. So God said, have you considered Job? There is a man on earth called Job. Have you been to his place? Have you considered him? In Job chapter 2 verse 1 to 3, you still see devil appeared again. In the same place. So in the court of heaven, he goes to bring what? Accusations. Accusations. 
Now in Revelation, if you read Revelation chapter 12 from verse 7 down to 12, you now see the Bible talks about when war appeared, when there was a war that broke out in heaven, Michael and his angels, they, you know, they now fought against the dragon and all that and all that. And then, let me take it from here. And then he said, and they overcame him, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their own selves to death. Therefore, O oh, rejoice, O oh, heaven, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to them having great wrath, because he knows that he has what? A short time. Now, he said, and there was no place found for the devil. Now, let me take it from verse 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast to the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation, strength, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the, for the accuser. That is where I'm going. He said, for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. So, his walk is accusation. Accusation. So he's going around, he's looking for something to pick against you. And when he picks it, where does he go? He goes and tenders as an evidence in the court. He picks it, he goes and tenders as an evidence. Now, you see, he's very skilled in his uh, prosecution do- duties. Very skilled. So when he picks an allegation, he can travel and go and pick it from your ancestry. What your grandfather, how your great-grandfather sold slaves and used it to build the first upstairs in your village. And he will bring the fire and tender it in the court of heaven and say, look at it. And this is the reason why so, so, and so do not see good. So he's an accuser. So he appears in the court of heaven with evidences. Accusing. So when he came, he said, do you have anything on Job? He said, I have tried that man. I have been there. He is fortified. And it's because you have built an edge around about him and around all that he has. And then you know all that, you know, where that conversation led to the trial of Job and all that and all that and all that. So devil, the accuser of brethren, he goes around. Now, the Bible now tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 12, he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He said, put on, put on the whole armor of God. Put on what God has provided for your defense. Don't just move out anyhow. Protect yourself. Defend yourself. Provisions have been made. He said, be strong. In the Lord. Be sober, be vigilant. But be strong in the Lord. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. But against principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. How do you get that strength? How do you become strong? How? How do you get strength? How do you become strong? Say, be strong in the Lord. How? How? How do you get strength? How do you become strong? Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as the eagle. They shall run 
and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint by waiting upon the Lord in the place of prayer, in the place of fasting. In the place of prayer, in the place of fasting. So if you are not strong, if you are not strong, you'll be taken down by the adversary that goes about seeking whom he may devour. Be strong. Be strong. He said, pray without ceasing. Men ought always to pray. You see, God created man. And the default mode of man is prayer, prayer, prayer. You are, you are, you are a species of prayer. If you don't know, know it. God created you so that you are, God created us insufficient. We are not sufficient by ourselves. And our sufficient will always come from him. How do you tap into the sufficiency of God on the altar of prayer? How do you renew your strength on the altar of prayer? How do you defeat the devil on the altar of prayer? So it's not an option. In the school of victory, prayer is not an auction. In the school of victory, prayer is not an elective. It's a compulsory course for everyone that must succeed the onslaught of the enemy. In Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, he said, now to him who is able to do, exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. All that we ask. God has made provision for everything that we need. But we need to what? Convert them. So when you are praying, you are not begging God to create anything anew. You. you are saying, your will be done. Your provision, I desire. Let it come. This, I need. So your prayer on the altar of prayer is the conversion. Conversion, where we receive the things that have been freely given unto us, the things that belong to us. We have vest them on the altar of prayer, we do the conversion from the heavenly places to the earth realm. You call forth your children. You call forth your finances. You call forth your marriage. You call forth the will. Pray, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. So for any man that wants the will of God to be done in his or her life, must pray. Must pray. Thy will. Be done. Now, the devil has prepared his will, his own package for each and every one of us. But you decide whether you want to accept or you want to enforce the will of God. If Jesus was telling his disciples, he said, pray, pray, our Father, let your will be done. So that is to let you know that the will of God is not automatic on the earth. Because there are resistances. There are oppositions. And my prayer for you is that you will rise. You will arise to stand and enforce the will of God in every area of your life. That you will arise and stand to enforce the kingdom of God in your vicinity. That the will of God will be what will be done. And that is when God is glorified. When his will is done in your life and his will, his, his will is done in your environment that God begins to rule and reign around you. When God is the one in charge, you have to enthrone him. You have to enforce it in prayer. So it doesn't happen automatically. So the word of God is only settled in heaven. But for us on the earth, we must enforce it. We must enforce it. So because there is opposition, there is resistance, 
that doesn't want the will of God to. Somebody said, he said, whatever God proposes, devil will all oppose. Whatever God proposes, devil will oppose. So why is the devil attacking you? Because of the great plans and the purpose of God for your life. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of good, not of evil. God has an expected end that he wants you to arrive at. But the devil won't sleep over that destiny. Devil won't allow it to come to pass. So there are certain things that you notice today that are supposed to have happened in your life, but they have not happened. It's not the fault of God. No, God is not withholding your blessings. Look at even Daniel. A prophet of God prayed. Prayed. For 21 days, from the fourth day he prayed, his answers were released. He was able to convert. Then to bring down, he was hijacked. But he continued to pray. You see, all these stories that, that we are slotted in the Bible is just for our own learning. So that you are praying you have not received. Keep praying. Keep praying. Imagine if Daniel had stopped praying in day two and said, in Jesus' name, amen, it is done. You know, some people will tell you if you pray more than two times, it's unbelief. That I just, just pray, believe uh, until it's in your hand. Don't stop. Push. Pray it until something happens. If your blessing has not been delivered in your hand, don't go on vacation. No. Pray until you receive what you are looking for. Pray until that condition changes. Pray. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. Look at the illustration of Jesus in Luke chapter 18. Using the unjust judge. He said, this woman persisted. Now I was telling them, um, when I say, I, I imagine the gate man of that woman, of, of the judge would have been pursuing this woman. This woman said, no way. I need justice. I need justice. I need justice. I need justice. You can't leave me like this. He said, Madam, I warned you, don't come here. He said, No way. I need justice. Now the judge said, Ah, uh ah. -uh. Maybe any time the woman, he held boo, 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 boo on his iron gate, he will just look, he will be the woman and the gate man battling there. He said, This woman again. This woman again. This woman again. And the woman persisted, keep knocking until the man said, Ah, I better save myself from this threat. And then God said, how much more? Look at what the unjust God said. How much more will God avenge his own elect? Not people who go on vacation. Who cry unto him what? Day and night. Day and night. People of God, prayer is not an option. Prayer is not an option. Prayer is not an option. It's a compulsory course in the school of the winners, in the school of the victors. It's a compulsory course. You must guard yourself. He said, let the fire be burning on the altar. It must not be put out. He said, pray without ceasing. Men ought always to pray. And you are a man. Stand to your feet. He said, give no place to the devil. He warned us. Give him no place. Give him no place. If you give the devil an inch, he will take two miles before you find out. Give him no place. Gag him everywhere. Tell him my territory is not for you. My household is not available. My family is not available. Not here, not here. Move on. I want you to ask God for grace tonight. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as the eagle. Ask God for strength. Not to give up in the place of prayer. Oh, to place your priorities right. 
Ask God for grace. To place your priorities right. Not to take things for granted. Oh, all we need is prayer. Every time is prayer. Prayer, prayer number one. Prayer number two. Prayer number three. You cannot beat prayer. You cannot do without prayer. You need to pray to break through. You need to pray to break through. You need to pray to break through. In the precious name of Jesus. Please, if you are tuning or you are here in the auditorium, but you have not given your life to Jesus. Jesus is not yet your Lord and personal Savior. The Bible tells us that the prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto God. You need to first of all make peace with him. The one that hears prayer will not hear you until you have, you have made peace with him. So if you want to say, Lord Jesus, maybe you have been praying without result. It could be one of the reasons. Because your prayer is not exceeding your ceiling, the roof of your house, or wherever you are praying it from. Because the, the, the link has not been established between you and heaven. And I want to help you this night, if you are willing, to repeat this prayer after me. If you want to say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. I want you to pray, Lord Jesus, you can repeat after me. I know that I'm a sinner. Today, I ask for your forgiveness. I know that you died for my sins on the cross of Calvary and rose from the dead on the third day. I repent from my sins and I invite you to come into my heart and life. I will follow you and serve you as my Lord and Savior all the days of my life. Hallelujah. If you have prayed that prayer, congratulations. Now you are belonging to the family of the Lord. And I want you to type the word, yes, Jesus, one word. Send it as a mail to this eChurch at dominionlife.org or as a text to the number 925-275-1600 and somebody will be in touch with you. Now I want you to lift up your hand, receive strength from heaven. Receive strength from heaven to tarry in the place of prayer. You will not be weary. You will not be tired. You will not be weary. You will not be tired. Receive strength from heaven this night. Receive strength from heaven. May the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord strengthen your prayer altar. May the Lord strengthen your family altar. In the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Put your hands together for Jesus. Jesus, as we take our seat, we give glory to God for his word.